So, okay. So just so you know, we're recording all of our lessons so that they can be posted on uh, YouTube later. And so other people who aren't available at this time uh, can jump on. So we're recording. If you don't want to be recorded, you can turn your, um, your screen off. And then also um, we'll use the chat box feature to um, if you have any questions or if you want to uh, make comments and stuff. And then I will um, try to reach all of you guys at the end. Um, but hey, it is so awesome to see your faces. This is so fun. <laughs> yeah. okay. This is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in our typical, so some, some of us are, are um, re, most of us are returning um, students. So it's so nice to see you again. And then for anybody who watches this, that is uh, new and has no idea what Kokoronogako is. Um, we'll just uh, do a quick like overview, like what it is, what what we're doing, um, and then uh, we'll jump right into one of my favorite books. So um, typically, this is what would happen when you walk into Gako is you'd be greeted by my face, and I would uh, introduce myself. I am I go by either Eguchi Sensei, uh, which is my pre married name, or Song Sensei. So you could call me either of those. Um, so if you didn't know by now, sensei means teacher. Um, so basically it's, you're just referring to me as teacher. Um, I have actually been at Gakko since 2010 teaching the fifth and sixth grade, um, and then also second grade. Um, and then I have for the past few years been teaching as, um, or serving as, uh, Kokono Gakko's principal, um, which is just a fancy term for like helping kind of oversee things and uh, leading in some morning exercises, <laughs> which we call Taiso. Um, and then actually the cool thing about this is I have actually been a part of Gakko since 1990. So Gakko oh, wow. had its <laughs> very first, um, let me see if I can screen share, I'll show you and see if you can find me. Let's see if you can find me. <laughs> okay, so here is Kokoronogako's very first class in 1990. Mm -hmm. it, was, um, um, it was founded by, right here, this is uh, Dr. Kondo, Dr. Jerry Kondo, and Mark Takeuchi down here. Uh -huh. um, they had a vision, and their vision was to preserve the Japanese-American um, uh, heritage and customs and pass that on to their kids. So what's crazy is that, uh, has anybody found me yet? <laughs> so I'll give you a hint. I'm in the top row. I'm in the top row. I know where you are. Kore, kore, kore. <laughs> kore, kore, kore. Ready? Are you ready? Uh, I know where it is. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, you. That's me. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> I think I was in third third grade, maybe. And then this is my brother, um, and I have lots of friends in this picture. So the crazy thing is, we have reached full circle, guys. Now my <laughs> kids are going to Kokoronogako, and my friends' kids are going to Kokoronogako. It's just been this amazing thing. And also, we also have some senseis um, who have taught. Here is. Um, Hashimoto sensei right here. She is actually still um, a teacher and you'll see her later this week. Um, Marsha. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Did I say Marsha Mar Mar Hashimoto? Uh, she is going to be teaching um, about Girls' Day and some festivals uh, later on um, this, this week and next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, Eiko-san, um, she's not presenting this week, but she has also been uh, she left and has come back uh, as a teacher. So it's just been such a neat thing to, um, to just be a part of it for so long. Uh -huh. um, and so basically, um, Dr. Kondo and uh, Pat or Mark Takayuchi, they uh, got together and had a vision for what they wanted to pass on. And now you don't have to be Japanese to want to learn about Japanese culture and history. So um so that's been such a cool thing to see over the past um, several years. Um, let's see. So I have one more video to share with you and then um, it's a short one. So don't worry. <laughs> uh, 
it. So you'll see some things that I'm going to talk about in my book today. The venue that we normally are in. So pay attention to this part. see themselves <laughs> um okay so essentially kokono no gakko basically the gakko means school and kokoro means from the heart so we are a school with heart um it's a two week long program dedicated to um the culture and arts of japan and founded to pass on the understanding of Japanese American culture. You can be anywhere from kindergarten through sixth grade. And we learn everything from Japanese customs and practices. And we do that through hands-on activities like bonsai, ikebana, um, origami, calligraphy, cooking, uh, language arts, singing, and there's so much more. And then if we were in person, there is an open house um, and then which is uh, facilitated through the amazing senseis Bob and Denise who lead these amazing um, theatrical and musical and artistic demonstrations. Um, and then also we have these amazing yummy potluck lunches and dinners. <laughs> and then finally, um, the last thing you need to know is that each grade level has a theme. So kindergarten teaches, does anybody remember? Festivals. Yes, yes, you can just call out. It's okay, there's not too many of us. Uh, festivals. So you'll see this week that um, Hashimoto Sensei will teach about uh, Girls' Day and Boys' Day. So you'll have to tune in for that. Uh, first grade teaches, well, we have Momi Sensei here. <laughs> so she can tell you. Um, paper and fish. Paper and fish. And so um, you'll see Momi Sensei here this week to um, give you some cool origami lessons. Um, so, and um, paper cutting, which is super fun. And then I am second grade. I am partial to my class. I think we have so much fun. Our theme is rice, which essentially leads into cooking. So on Wednesday, I'm going to lead um, a class uh, teaching on how to make mochi cake. Um, and then today I'll be reading one of my favorite books um, right here called Thank You Very Mochi. Um, so I'm going to read that to you in just a few moments. And then third grade uh, is Eiko Sensei. She was teaching games. Games. Yeah. So you got I remember. I remember when we were doing uh, stuff with like the plays, you know, like we, uh, I remember we, we did uh, stuff like where the third grade uh, teamed up with the uh, kindergartners. That's awesome. Like with games and festivals. Uh-huh. That's so cool. That They yeah. kind of go hand in hand, right? And so they got to create their own like ceramic, um, ceramic like games. And um, so that's pretty cool. And yeah. then fourth grade is, anybody know? Ooh. Yes. Recording. Bamboo. Bamboo, you are correct. And they actually get to go um, on a field trip in fourth grade to visit the bamboo gardens. And then fifth grade um, and sixth grade are combined in a class um, and it changes every year, um, but it uh, changes from immigration um, and relocation. And they talk about the internment camps. And so also this week, you're gonna have the amazing He's pretty famous, I would say, right? I mean, he's pretty up there with like famous status, but Mas uh, Hashimoto, who has actually given a TED talk, I didn't know this, he is going to be joining us um, this week to um, discuss his experiences um, 
with immigration and internment camps. Um, so stay tuned for that. And then they're also going to have like a Q and A session where you get to ask him um, some questions. So that's pretty much um, the K through five and six program. And then, like I said, you also have the music program with Bob and Denise, who are incredible. They they have the most incredible uh, programs that kind of culminate the the two weeks at Gaco. Okay, so. Um, I already told you to meet me on Wednesday and we'll make some mochi cake together. And then lastly, on Friday of the second week, we're going to be having a super important meeting. Um, so tell all your uh, families and parents to join us on Zoom on Friday, July 2nd. I believe it's at seven o'clock. You'll have to check uh, the calendar. But that is specifically to discuss what GACO looks like next year. Um, we've had a, a couple of years away from each other and whether that means we want to start where we left off or whether we want to just, you know, figure out a way to catch you up and do the grade level that you're in. These are all things we want to talk about and see what um, the parents um, and families want to do. So join us Friday to give us your input. And now, unless there's any questions before I go, we are going to do some reading. All right. So I love reading this book on mochi making day because it, there's, there's events that happen that we get to do um, and it's just a super, super fun book. So I'm going to go ahead and read. Let's see. Let me see if I can make the screen bigger. And we're going to be difficult. How do I make it bigger? He sounds like Maleficent. Um, okay, well, I'll just do it like this. Worked when I wasn't live. Okay, so this says, Thank you very mochi by Pa Matsushima, Sophie Wang, and Craig Ishii. Is this too small or can you see this? Can you see it okay? There you go. Okay. Every December, Kimi's family woke up bright and early to go to their family's mochisuki. Time to get up, Kimi heard from downstairs. We're, go we're going to grandma and grandpa's. Kimi popped out of her covers. Yummy mochi, here I come, she yelled as she jumped out of bed. As the family buckled up for the long drive, Kimi's mom asked, What's the first thing you're going to do when we get there, Kimi? I'm going to make the biggest mochi ever, Kimi said, and I want to put shoyu on it and furikake and red beans. Kimi's family finally arrived, but as they walked up to the house, Kimi noticed something was wrong. Grandma was holding the front door open. The uncles and aunties were rushing in and out of the kitchen, and the cousins were fanning smoke out of the windows. What's happening, Kimi asked. The mochi machine is broken, yelled Grandma as Kimi and her parents rushed into the house. Kimi's face fell. Does that mean Mochizuki is canceled, she worried. Just then, they heard a voice from the backyard and backyard yell, out here. It was grandpa. Follow me, he said, gesturing towards the garage. Our mochi machine may be broken, but I have something better. As the family headed over, Kimi wondered, but how can you make mochi without a machine? I sure hope this works. Grandpa pointed to the stone bowl and a few wooden mallets in the corner as the family squeezed into the garage. When I was little, this piece of rock and these hunks of wood were all we had to make our mochi with, he said, chuckling. Can we really make mochi with those? Kimi asked doubtfully. Of course we can, Grandpa replied. Help me move everything to the backyard and I'll show you just how we'll do it. The mochizuki tools were very heavy, but everyone did their part. The cousins lugged the wooden mallets while it took all of the aunties and uncles to carry the giant stone bowl. Gr 
Grandpa led the parade with a shamoji in hand, explaining how to set everything up. Grandma handed Kimi the pot of mochikome. You get to carry a very important ingredient, Kimi. After all, you can't make mochi without the rice, she said, smiling. Okay, I'll be careful, Kimi giggled. Outside, Grandpa picked up one of the tall mallets. He leaned over to Kimi and said, The last time I made mochi this way, this kine was taller than me. Kine? Kimi asked. Ah, yes. Kine are the mallets we use to pound the mochi, Grandpa said. My father told me to remember it this way. The kine are skinny, like skinny, get it? I can't believe I haven't used these since he, I was a boy, he chuckled. Kimi giggled. She couldn't imagine Grandpa as a little kid. As they set, the stone, set up the stone bowl, Grandpa explained, the mochi is pounded in this bowl called an usu. We remember this one as ooh, super heavy. In my day, we didn't have fancy mochi making machines. If we wanted to eat mochi, we had to work all day long for it, he continued. Whoa, all day, Kimi thought? She never realized how easy she had it. Now we pound the rice, Grandpa said. My father taught me that we count off in Japanese to make sure no one gets hurt. Oh man, I bet you guys remember this. Ichi, ni, san, shi. Ichi, ni, san, shi. The four cousins yelled as they took their turn. Um, Ichi, ni, san, shi, Kimi and Grandpa shouted as they took their turn. Wow, Kimi thought as her arms started to tire. This is a lot of work. Good thing everybody is here to help. On to the next step, Grandma said, sending, in, sending the family inside to mold, stuff, and package the mochi. Kimi stayed with Grandpa to pound the last batches. As wood from the kine flaked into the rice, she asked, should I take those wood chips out? Grandpa chuckled, wiping sweat from his brow. Oh, no, no, no. As my father always said, the wood flakes and sweat are where the flavor comes from. As the sun set, Kimi looked inside, eyes wide at all the mochi they had made. You know, Kimi, there's one ingredient we couldn't have made this mochi without, Grandpa said. Can you guess what it is? Now, most of you have already read this story, so I think you already know the answer. But does anybody who hasn't read this book yet, do you have an idea of what it might be? I mean, I haven't read this book for like more than two years or something like that. So. That is true. It's been a while. So anybody guess what's the special ingredient you couldn't make mochi without? Any guesses? The rice, Kimi asked. Grandpa shook his head. Oh, the kine and the usu? The shoyu and the red beans. Grandpa shook his head. Um, well, it's not the rice or the kine and the usu or the shoyu and the red beans. What is it? Is it the people that make it? I mean, you definitely need the people. That is correct. You're very, you're getting there. It is family. You are correct. Kimi thought about grandpa's answer as she looked around. She thought about how close she felt with her whole family after working alongside them. She thought about the joys of everybody being there together every year. Without family, there would be no mochizuki. Family really was the most important ingredient. You know, Kimi, it doesn't matter what kind of tools we use to make the mochi, Grandpa said softly. It's about doing it together. My family passed the lesson on to me, and I hope one day you'll pass it on to your family too. Kimi hugged Grandpa. Okay, Grandpa. I will. After cleaning up, Kimi and Grandpa went back inside. Kimi grabbed a piece of warm, soft mochi and smiled at all the people in the room. 
After a long day working together, she had a greater appreciation, not just for the Mutsuki, but for her family. And that's the end. You know, that's like one of the biggest family that I ever seen. <laughs> well, that was so fun. Thank you so much for joining me for this. Um, one thing I realize is that, you know, every year at Gako, we do get together. You saw from the videos I showed before that that we do all the grade levels take part, right? And we all count in the Ichi Ni Sun, each or well, Ichi Ni. I think we do Ichi Ni Sun, right? Um, and then everybody takes turns counting. So, I mean, this is so relatable for us. And I think one thing I miss about Gako the most is that community, like is seeing all of you guys and being with you and uh, getting to do these fun things together. So I would definitely agree with grandpa that uh, the most important part about Mochitsuki and Kokoro no Gako in general is just uh, the family and community that I, that I have with all of you guys. So I'm going to open it up. It's a little bit scary for a teacher to do this, but I'm going to open it up and ask you guys if you have any questions or comments um, or things you wanted to share uh, relating to maybe uh, Mochi Day or um, if you've um, your favorite kind of Mochi or what you miss about Gakko or anybody? One thing that I mainly miss about uh, Gakko is that like, I miss the food. <laughs> totally, right? I'm teach second grade and I'm cooking. I miss the food. <laughs> <laughs> you miss the cooking. Yeah, well, I just miss being with the kiddos and getting to cook together. That's the best part. Yeah, I remember when we did that. Mizuno Sensei, did you have something you wanted to share? Well, I just wanted to say thank you for reading that story. It brings tears to my eyes every time. And I remember all the times we've made mochi at Gakko. And when I was in Japan, we made it that way. Wow. It's very special. Thank you. No, thank you. My family makes mochi at a redwood forest every year. No way. That's awesome. Now, did you use the, the kini and the usu or do you have a mochi making machine? We use the Whoa, that's that's dedication right there. That's awesome. I actually see uh, faces that live far away. Do I have my Utah friends here? Yep, we're hey. here. Hi, guys. Oh, man, so good to see your faces. You too. We're excited and, to do this. And I see the cousins. You guys are in, are you in San Diego? So cute. Oh, and friends from San Jose. Hey guys. <laughs> oh man, it's so good to see you guys. I sure miss you. This makes me miss you more actually. Ugh. But Melissa, could, yes. could you shop, stop sharing your screen so we yes, can all I see can. everybody? Oh yes, Great. I'm sorry. That's great. Okay. I'm actually new to this Zoom, but this is this is pretty fun. Hey, Mia. <laughs> oh, so cool. It is cool. Well, I hope you guys stay tuned and uh, pop in later this week. We have some super fun things uh, planned. Who's going to origami? There's like three or four different origami classes. So fun. Um, who's going to be there on Wednesday to cook a uh, mochi cake with me? Yes. The cool thing about doing it is on zoom is I don't have to share with any of you guys. <laughs> we, we, we all get to uh, eat our own and, uh, you'll have to find a secret hiding spot. If you have a big family that you can share with your families and then tell them you made it yourself. So um, let's see. Oh, and then you'll have to join in on this week. I believe uh, Bob and Denise are going to do a reading of Momotaru, which is so fun. That's one of my favorite Japanese stories. It's a great story. Very cool. And you get to do it uh, play style, right? Like with the uh, parts and all? Yeah, we're going to do it like a play. So there will be different characters reading different parts. So you'll get awesome. to really express yourself. So cool. <laughs> Um, and what else do we have going on? Oh, you get to see Sumie, right? You get to see Sumie, which is ink painting. 
And then um, you also get blessed with uh, Mizuno senseis are going to give you some really cool language lessons, which is, I know a, a bulk of you are, is the reason why you're here. Uh, Mizuno sensei, are you going to be, uh, what types of things are you going to teach us on our language lessons? We're going to teach you, we're going to teach you how to introduce yourself. And, and tell what your hobbies are and tell about your family and tell how old you are and how to, um, how to give greetings and say hello and goodbye and thank you and things like that. That's so cool. I need that actually. We'll also, we'll also teach you how to write your name in <laughs> Japanese. Awesome. I am um, fourth generation Japanese, so I'm full Japanese, but I am terrible. I once told the kids um, that you, I, that to introduce myself, I say Watashi wa, and then my name, which is so wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> That's describing yourself. So I won't teach any language lessons, but we'll it's, leave that. it's not wrong, Melissa. It's just um, usually people leave it out. That's all. Oh, okay. Well, my grandma um, would come to all the open house uh, at the end of the week and uh -huh. I would say things in Japanese and then she'd sit in the audience and say, oh my gosh, you said that wrong or that was pronounced so <laughs> bad. So yeah, I tried. That's the important part about Kokono no Gakko, right? It's just that we try that. <laughs> Learn by trying. <laughs> Grandmas can be critical. Oh, yeah well <laughs> mine it was funny but yeah she definitely had had things to teach me that's what I found out <laughs> all right you guys well I didn't quite make it the 40 minutes or well almost 30 but so good to see you guys come back at one o'clock right one o'clock for Momi Sensei's origami lesson it's gonna be amazing um so maybe we'll see some of your faces there again um, and then we'll see you later throughout this week. I hope you guys are having a fun summer. We miss you so much. Thanks for popping uh, on. By the way, I'm also going to swimming classes. Woo -woo. Good job. Yeah. All right, guys. See you okay, soon. Bye. Oh. Okay.